Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video, doing the ECMWF 30 day look ahead for today's first video. Uh, so as always on a Tuesday, we're having a look at weather for the next four weeks uh, across uh, not just UK but Northern Europe as well. Uh, going to take us into the uh, middle part of uh, March and I should get on that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that we can extend out to weeks five and six uh, with this. So... Um, we always stop at week four, though, for this video, as it is a 30-day look at. But we will show you weeks five and six data uh, as part of our live stream tomorrow. And that will be coming up from uh, six o'clock. So uh, you'll be able to see weeks five and six data as part of a live stream um, tomorrow evening. A big thank you to ecmdf.int uh, for supplying us uh, with these charts. Thank you so much to them uh, for doing that. We'll have a 10 to 14 day coming up later on. That will, of course, have all of the regular features included as well. Right, let's do this then. We're going to start off with the uh, week one mean silver pressure anomaly. This is taking us through this week, but we're currently in uh, from the 15th through 22nd of uh, February. So uh, the coming uh, week, or this week, we'll have low pressure out to the west of the UK and Ireland. High pressure will be ridging up from Italy and the central med into central, eastern and northern parts of Europe. On the west side of Europe, we'll be pulling up uh, a very mild southerly wind between the trough and the ridge. On the eastern side of Europe, we'll be bringing down a very cold northerly wind. So all of the cold air that's been sitting over uh, sort of western Europe over the past few weeks has been shoved off into the east and southeast of Europe and you know uh, western Europe has turned a lot milder with those southerly winds so a complete change in the pattern that we've had through most of this winter so far. The 500 mil of our height anomaly again shows this up very nicely from the North Pole uh, view down. Again, we've got the low pressure out in the Atlantic to the west of Ireland, UK and Spain and Portugal. We've got this big ridge extending from the Med up into northern parts of Europe. It does actually connect back to the northern blocking that's been omnipresent through most of the uh, winter, but but it's a different orientation of this blocking now that's bringing mild southerly winds up the west side of Europe, but also this trough of low pressure across the northeast and the east of Europe uh, bring cold uh, northerlies to the eastern part of Europe. This so the temperature anomaly is looking a proper uh, east-west split, but this time a flip on what we've had through most of the winter with the coldest temperature anomalies in the east, particularly the northeast. So uh, like the Baltic Sea through to northwest parts of Russia, bitter, bitter cold through there with temperature anomaly going down to around 12 degrees below average. These colder than average temperatures also extending right way down the eastern side of Europe, Greece and Turkey, for example, uh, very cold through there. We've heard on the news that they've had, uh, you know, heavy snow in Athens, for example, over the past few days. And the, the really cold weather will continue there uh, for the uh, for the for the coming um, week. Uh, in the west, so it's much milder, much milder across west parts of Europe, from Germany all the way back to UK and Ireland, down to France, in Spain, Portugal, and through most of central part of the Med. It is sub substantially and significantly milder than average now with some places in those orange to red colours going to around uh, 6 to 8 degrees uh, above average. Mediterranean does display this east-west split as well. So the eastern part of the Mediterranean looks significantly uh, milder than average. Or western part of the Mediterranean, I should say, looks significantly milder than average. The eastern part of the Med looks significantly cold than average. That does include, of course, uh, Greece and the Greek islands. The precipitation only has a freeway split. So in the northwest, it's a little bit wetter than average from Scandinavia uh, down into the UK and Ireland. Above average rainfall for either the UK. And as we go to Scandinavia, of course, we get to above average snowfall. Then a large swathe of drier weather from northwestern Russia all the way down to Spain and uh, Portugal, encompassing uh, like the Balkans as well. Pretty dry through there. Even dry, dry really, into like uh, parts of Greece too. But as we get further on into the far eastern part of the Med, around the Black Sea, and then go down into parts of Turkey and, and eastern Greece and into sort of Cyprus, those kind of areas, then it does get a little bit wet. And of course, with the cold air further north, some of that will be uh, snow. 
Right, so that's week one uh, done. Let's have a look at week two, Ben. It's going to take us from the 22nd of February through to the 1st of March. That's how we look. So the final week of February, we'll see high pressure dominating across many parts of uh, Europe, actually. So the high pressure is still there in the north, uh, still like Northern Bloc, no Scandinavia. Uh, a ridge also over and just to the east of the UK as well and down into the bed. The low pressure in the Atlantic looks like being pushed back westwards. So high pressure is definitely taking over through most parts of uh, Europe. Some low pressure up in towards the northwest of Russia. But even into the east of Europe, it looks like the ridge is extending through. So basically, I think just say this is quite an anti-cyclonic week through nearly all parts of uh, Europe. Let's have a look at the 500 mil of our height anomaly for week two and there you see it so just a large ridge really covering most parts of uh, europe high, high pressure extending from the arctic it's still green uh still still green and non blocking extending from green to the arctic all the way down through these northern central some eastern southern and southwestern parts of europe it really is a high pressure fest low pressure trough is like over western russia and just still into the eastern part of the med and the low pressure in the Atlantic is being pushed further out into the Atlantic actually so high pressure high and dry really taking over uh for like the second week uh, like the second week week two uh precipitation only is still significantly above average i'm a little bit dubious that it would be this mild and about big ridge although it is a mild ridge but it's uh you know built up from the south and connected to all and blocking because it's still you know still winter so under this ridge you would expect frost and fog at the very least especially through like central parts of europe it's very cold in the far northeast of europe again just around those baltic states and heading in towards um into the, towards the northwest of russia still pretty cold around the black sea going down to Greece and Turkey as well. But otherwise, it's it's milder than average, especially so for, like, southern parts of Scandinavia, and then anywhere from Poland all the way back to France, and um, into Spain and Portugal, uh, substantially above average, around uh, 6 uh, degrees above average through those areas. Iron in the UK, yes, still milder than average here, not as mild as it has been, nevertheless, still above average, around 3 or 4 degrees uh, above average. And, of course, you expect quite a dry week here with high pressure absolutely dominating the scene so uh, most places are dry and average again from the uk and ireland uh, spain portugal france and west all the way over towards black sea uh, in the east certainly the uh, western shores of black sea anyway it's a uh, substantially dry and average the far north of europe around scandinavia some above average precipitation there just extending down into the northwest of them um, and the west of russia and again that would be primarily uh, snow of course uh, Mediterranean-wise, it's pretty much dry on average all the way from Spain right way over to Greece and Turkey. Right, let's have a look at week three then. It takes from the 1st through to the 8th of March. The high pressure is gradually inching westwards, isn't it? Now it's sort of centred, so a little bit of retrogression here. Now the high pressure is centred over and just to the northwest of the British Isles, probably bring down colder winds again into northern parts of Europe, possibly begin to push that into some western parts of uh, Europe as well. Well, just allow the wind to go back into the north or, or to the north east. Probably a little bit more unsettled around here with a trough of low pressure. Um, so, yeah, you know, the high pressure gradually inching its way uh, westwards once again. 500 millibar height anomaly for week uh, three looks like that. So, with time, this high pressure is sort of pushing towards the northwest. But coldest of weather is probably still in the east and the northeast with that trough of low pressure. But by this point, depending on how far northwest the high goes, we could be starting to pull colder air back, certainly to Scandinavia and some uh, northern parts of uh, Europe anyway. The uh, week three temperature anomaly looks like that. Quite a big cool down from week two to week three, uh, really. So we've still got Norway looking a little bit milder than average. Coldest weather, of course, is again from the Baltic Sea over towards the uh, northwest of Russia, where we've got that that cold trough of low pressure. But somewhat cold conditions are extending back westwards again. We can see parts of Ireland, the UK, on France, into uh, the low countries, Poland, for example, going uh, a little bit colder than average as well. And other areas, whilst not cold average, do, do see a flip from like 
uh, 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 significantly above average to near normal or no signal. So I think this is definitely getting colder into the first week of uh, uh, of March. And much of northern, central and west Europe, that high pressure pulls out towards the northwest. It starts to bring the wind back in from the north and from the, from the northeast. In the Mediterranean, uh, again, a cool down is going on through the central and western part of the Med back towards average or no signal. At the same time, the eastern part of the Med might be starting to uh, get a little bit milder, perhaps, although it is a weak signal. And then lastly for this uh, update, we're going to finish at week four, which will be the 8th to 15th of March. Let's see what happens then. So all of a sudden, the same week of March sees a dramatic uh, reduction of the signal. So I'm going to ridge across eastern, southeastern parts of Europe. So you expect that to be bringing much milder air up from North Africa into the eastern part of the bed and possibly into some eastern parts of Europe. It's got a trough of low pressure up towards the northeast of Europe. That will be bringing cold northerly winds. Quite what's happening on the western side of Europe uh, is a bit of a mystery here. Um, with the ridge uh, through here, a milder sort of southerly winds pushing up the east and south east side of Europe, you'll probably expect the north and west of Europe to be colder with, with northerly winds at a trough of low pressure just the way but the, where the system tends to balance itself out. But it is a little bit of a mystery what's happening in the west of the Europe uh, for week four. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like that. So again, we've got this mild ridge, warm ridge across the eastern part of uh, the Mediterranean in southeastern Europe. Uh, a trough of low pressure in the far north and northeast. That's going to be digging in very cold normally. And then again, quite what's going on in the west of Europe is a little bit uh, mysterious. The temperature anomaly for week two, um, weakening signals again. So it's all a little bit mysterious, isn't it? This second week of uh, March, week four, I should say. Uh, all a little bit mysterious. Cold average of far north and east and northeast of Europe, milder than average here through the central and probably eastern part of the Mediterranean. And again, very weak signals for Western Europe. Lastly, the precipitation anomaly for week four. Again, all going very, very uh, weak. No particular signal here uh, other than driving average in like the east or southeast of Europe. We've got that um, ridge of high pressure. But the second week of March is uh, continuing to look rather mysterious, I have to say. So we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, there. Right, that's it then. Uh, so it looks like we may get some more cold weather into early March. Generally, the next couple of weeks shaping up to be really mild across eastern, uh, across the northern and west parts of Europe, I should say, while eastern Europe is a lot colder and a flip on what we've had through most of this winter. We may flip it again into early March and turn it colder again in the north and west and milder in the east and the southeast. And then what happens after as we go further on into March is in the realm of speculation. We'll have more tomorrow in our live stream when we show you weeks five and six data. Right, that's it then. I'm going to be back later on with your 10 to 14 day. Now, the GFS extended is beginning to flirt with the idea of much colder weather coming back for the beginning of March. More about that in today's second video update. We made your ensembles watch tonight. Uh, for this one, though, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.